Um, our first panel for the day is titled How to Build Your Creative Confidence. On the panel, we have Mr. Hamaid Mansour, who is the Managing Director of Medicure Group. In addition to his role, Mr. Hamaid's passion is art. He is self-taught and focuses on the abstract form. His signature style is spontaneous brushstroke with calligraphic shapes. Please welcome, please welcome on stage Mr. Hamaid Mansour. Also on our panel, we have Ms. Noor Shamma, who was with us yesterday, if you uh, were here. Um, if you were not, I'll uh, give you a bit of information about her. She's an entrepreneur and founder of the Postcard Initiative. She is driven by curiosity, emotion, and desire, and con consciously does not classify herself as a particular type of artist so that she can express herself through many uh, different mediums. Please welcome on stage Ms. Noor Shamma. We also have Ms. Hala Turki, who is the CEO of Cowen Education and founder and partner of Al Ta'at Leadership Development Institute. She has a rich background in education and training with years of industry experience both regionally and internationally and strong leadership skills and a personality which she nurtured holding top positions serving government and private uh, in the in both the government and private sector she has an entrepreneurial spirit and uh, she developed that and uh, by establishing profitable startup educational institutes throughout the region please welcome on stage mrs hella al turki Um, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Omar al Busaidi could not be with us today, um, but the moderator for the panel is Mr. Aman Merchant, who is the CEO and co-founder of Impact Hub Dubai. He is a Dubai-based entrepreneur uh, with passionate about creating better futures through the power of ideas and disruptive thinking. With an entrepreneurial journey that began in 1991, even before he entered university, he brings over two decades of experience to the various ventures that he is associated with. Please welcome on stage Mr. Aman Merchants. Thank you very much. Right, assalamu alaikum and uh, good morning everyone. Thank you for being here on the panel. Uh, I see a very, I guess, a young audience. All of us are young, I guess, by heart, but even otherwise, everyone's young here on, in the audience. So I guess uh, the topic is how to build your creative uh, confidence. So I got a quick, uh, I guess, test I need to do. I know you guys are probably used to doing tests in, uh, as students. The first test is, which ones in the audience think you are creative? Can I just see a show of hands? Who's creative? Okay, uh, who feels that they're confident? And who doesn't know the answer? Okay, it's interesting. So the topic is how do you build creative confidence? Uh, we have a very illustrious panel here and I'll get to you in, in a few minutes. I just wanna kind of set the stage for our discussion this morning which is that is creative confidence, is it a myth? Is it the, uh, the domain of the so-called special ones? Is it something that can be learned? Or is it kind of something you're born with? And once you actually are, I guess, in possession of it, and you get to 
the the table of creative confidence, do you kind of stay with it? Is it like something you can develop mastery in? Now, I guess I would like to change the title, so sorry I didn't tell you this last night, but uh, I think a, probably a better question is not how do you build your creative confidence, but how do you reclaim what was rightfully yours? And the reason I ask this question, or frame it, reframe it this way, is that who do you think is the, are the most creative people in the world? A question. Who do you think, okay, I guess this is a question I can ask the audiences. Who do you think are the most creative people in the world? By category. Children, kids. So all of us are born creative. You know, we do a lot of activities whether they're in nursery and in school. And then over time, because of social pressures or feedback or I guess the need to be more practical, we end up losing that streak. And we end up being classified into the so-called creatives and non-creatives. And then again, over time, we start to accept that the latter is acceptable because it's practical. So the discussion today is to, I guess, have that conversation. How do we reclaim what is rightfully ours? On the panel today, as we were kind of introduced earlier on, um, I've got three or two entrepreneurs over here, uh, Homed and um, uh, Anur, and I've got Hala, who is also, I guess, an edupreneur in that sense. Mm -hmm. So, with let me, I guess, begin with the question, and we'll play a kind of a quick, easy game over here. I'm going to ask a few questions, and I want to res have you respond just with one word that comes to mind. So, I'll, I guess, start with on my right side. I've got okay. uh, Hala. So, when I if someone says Hala, Hala, what word comes to mind? When you say Hala. Yeah. Well, if, if, you, if you know how to speak Arabic, it means hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you say so, hello means hello? Yes. Okay. And when we say Noor, who's Noor? What word comes to mind? Complicated. Complicated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. That's a post-presentation discussion then. <laughs> All right. And when we say uh, Humed. Oh, that's a, a very long discussion. I don't think it takes one but, word. But uh, I... I, I, I I've established myself uh, in the recent past as, as an artist. So, I mean, that's the first thing that would come to artist. my mind. Artist, all right. Yeah. So, and then when someone says uh, creative confidence, what comes to mind again? One word. What comes to mind? Anyone? I mean, let's, I guess, go from the right to the left. Easy. It's probably easier. Hello? Well, uh, creative confidence in terms of how do you stand out and be unique, you know, in the way you think or the way you approach things. So it's that uniqueness in thought and, and mm -hmm. application, really. Okay. Um, I think it's, uh, is this working? Oh. I think it's more about the not worrying about what's right and wrong creatively. Mm -hmm. The freedom to express yourself without worrying how, it's, how it may or may not be perceived. I think that's a very high level of creative confidence that not many have established because usually people want to create art or want to do things to please others to get recognition attention and all that okay. but I, I believe people with ultimate creative confidence don't care what people think as long as they're happy with their piece or their their product then that's all that counts okay I, I, I think I'll go back to what you were talking about earlier in terms of um, you know the, the when, you, when you mentioned kids and how they're the, the, the most creative um, you know, sort of people. Um, what what I think is, you know, with the social norms that are that are constructed as we grow older, um, it, it becomes very difficult to sort of reconnect with what I would, you know, say I think is creative as opposed to what you think is creative. Um, building confidence in that is 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 something that you, that requires you to break away from those norms. So um, you know, the the more that uh, it, it also lends to what Hedda was saying is, is, as long as you can be unique in that aspect and show that you know you you are willing to push the envelope just a little bit more than what is socially accepted, I think that is what brings about the confidence that you perhaps are referring to. So, so that what comes to mind when you hear a creative confidence and you think of the who. So you know who comes to mind when someone says this person or this thing is creative confident. Who comes to mind? A person, an experience, uh, a place? I mean, can you kind of, from a memory perspective, you know, who comes um, to mind? I think there are way, two ways to look at this. There's the kids where 
to them they don't care if the colors match or if you, they're coloring in the lines or if it makes sense they they come up with the weirdest weirdest things and then um steve jobs is a very um very like um, obvious example that comes to mind in, in my case because he believed in things so much he fought everyone he mm -hmm. He, he was very creative and he knew he was creative and he knew what his creativity can lead to. And that was like a whole different level of creative confidence. Yeah. All right. um, uh, also, if you consider all those people who come up with these unique ideas and creative ideas that in the beginning everyone is surprised to see and like, what is this? Yet they hold on to that idea and you suddenly see you know, the whole public and people and society following it and actually replicating it, yeah? So this is what comes to mind in terms of that creative confidence. People who know that whatever thought they bring or whatever idea they bring or whatever concept they lay out is creative. And no matter what the first impression is, whether it's surprise, rejection, whatever, they stand really uh, strong in terms of backing up that creative idea which they came up with or the creative thought they had and, and kind of fighting that war through <laughs> until suddenly, yes, everyone is following that trend. And it's a lot. It's a lot what we see now in the digital world, especially, you know, we see a lot of concepts coming up and new ideas and new things. And in the beginning, people are questioning, not knowing what it is. But then suddenly you see everyone on it. So um, I see those people as really being people that are creatively confident. Yeah. Thank you. Allah. Well, I mean, I, again, no, no one person really comes to mind, but I, I, I would agree with what, what Hela and were saying in that, um, you know, especially in, in today's day and age uh, where, you know, you, social media has taken over the world, right? Um, and it's so easy to put your idea out there, whether it be new, different, whatever it is, um, as long as I'm sure about it, you know, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. And um, I think the, the, the more you, you, you sort of push it, um, if it's a good idea, eventually people will come around and then, you know, people will start following and, you know, they will start replicating. So I think that in itself is, 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 is a big component of this confidence that you talk about because you need to be sure of yourself before you, you actually put it out there. So, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a process, I think. It's not just, I, again, people, yes, are very good at it, certain people, and others might not be where, you know, and they need to build it up, I guess. So. So, so we'll ask you about your secret formula in a short while <laughs> for, for being that, so we'll hold you accountable to it. But as you've probably realized, uh, or I guess I've realized, uh, that I've failed miserably at doing one thing in the first few minutes, uh, is how do you actually have creative people follow rules? Uh, I set a rule, I said I'm going to ask a question, please respond with a quick response or a quick response. Everyone wanted to kind of elaborate because like they had this energy to contribute. And this is a, a basic principle, right? Creative people are very difficult to contain in that sense. So again, thank you for kind of getting this thing off to the right mode. But if creative confidence is, uh, you know, wh why bother with it? I mean, is it important? I mean, do you think it's something that we really need? Why kind of I, spend time on it? I don't think, um, I just want to clarify, creativity is not just being artistic. Creativity is in everything you do. Mm -hmm. um, theories of physics are based on creativity and imagination. And Einstein is one of the most famous creative, uh, imaginative people because he combined intelligence and creativity to come up with all these weird physics formulas that I cannot even comprehend. But um, I mean, logic gets things done, but creativity is what gets people to stand out or to create what's not been created or to build on logic to create intuitive or um, like amazing uh, inspirational projects and, and products and everything that we're um, basically benefiting from today because creativity has been something that's going on for um, like forever. It's, it's something that everyone's been born with and everyone tried to build on to find ways to heat a place by, I don't know, I don't know who decided to like hold two rocks and start rubbing them to, to like build a fire. That's very creative. I'd never think of that if I was back then. But I mean, people, survival makes you creative um need makes you creative mm -hmm. um thirst for things makes you creative being trapped 
gets you creative. Mm -hmm. I think I think it depends when everything is so easy, like nowadays for, with social media and all the exposure that's happening, our brains are a bit slower somehow because we're being fed with so much. It's it just we're lagging somehow. Mm -hmm. But then before, because our like everything was cleaner, everything was more focus and then you you're put in in harder situations more difficulties and i i feel like the way creativity was um was handled before is way different from now now we're all, we we keep focusing on innovation and entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and and all that stuff but creativity is in the simplest little things sometimes you look at your kids and they come up with the weirdest smartest things and mm -hmm. you're like how did you think of that or they like they, they use certain tools for other things and it works mm -hmm. but we don't think that way because we're at an age where it's right or wrong there are standards and mm -hmm. rules and our brains are basically programmed to follow these rules so so building on that then i guess the question for uh, you know i'll move to uh Humayt for this one you know then what's the link between creativity and confidence well so I, I would actually uh, firstly very much agree with Noor. Um, again, just to give you a bit of background, I, I, I used to work uh, with one of the government companies here in the marketing department, um, and I had a very close relationship with the graphic designer um, that used to work with us, um, and because we used to do a lot of work together for a lot of projects, and whenever anybody would come up to her, they'd be like, oh, you need to be creative with this pitch. And that's the that's the one thing that you, you can't, you know, I mean, it... it, it Again, you create, like Noor was saying, you know, creativity can come from the simplest of things. I mean, but I, I very much agree in that, you know, it, 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 it comes from a need for something. So where, whether it be a need for survival or whether it be a need for, I don't know, it could be the most basic thing. It could be, you know, I, I need to make money for my family to survive. So, you know, you... you Desperation. You, exactly. You, you, you have a certain set of resources. How do you use these in the best possible manage, manner to come up with the desired result? I think of Cast Away, the movie. Like that's, that's the epitome of creativity, yeah. like Wilson, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> and he survived. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess, so from what I'm hearing now, it seems to me that it's less of a skill set and more of a mindset, uh, yes. and, or at least it begins it's with the combo. mindset and then kind of goes yeah. to the skill set. Mm -hmm. So if we have to reflect on the rich experiences that you all have had, both from the art and the non-art side, the education and non-education side, you know, for the audience out here, if you were to give them some, I guess, tips, some perspectives on how to kind of develop that creative confidence, you know, what kind of uh, ingredients or formula would you suggest? And maybe Hala, you can some shed some light on that. Um, yes, and building on what um, uh, Noor and Ahmed said, you know, the, the, there was a key word that was mentioned by Noor here that creativity for survival, yeah? So and although in the past it was survival, but now we ought to think about how can we put creativity in a commercial context, so to make a living from, right? To make a, like, a, become an entrepreneur and, and pursue a job. And um, Hamid gave an example about being creative in his pitch. So people are putting creativity in a commercial context. And in order to put it in a commercial context, there are a number of skills that are required around it. So creativity, you can be talented, uh, uh, a talented creative person yourself, or you can build it up. However, it does need to be supported with a range of skills. Um, at Cohen Education, we, we um, deliver digital education. Digital because there are more than 100 million youth, Arab youth around the world. 25% of those are unemployed. So we wanted to really help with that matter and see what, how can we resolve that? How can we get youth really to go out and, and exploit opportunities? Where are the pre opportunities? And opportunities are in the creative field, in the digital field. However, um, to be creative in the digital field, you do need these other skills in terms of how to be innovative, how to, uh, how to get that creativity of you to manifest in, for example, an online program, a digital platform, uh, an, an app, something like that. For see, just having that creative thought or that creative uh, talent is in it 
itself not enough. It needs to be supported with these skills or even coding and programming, yeah? So if we think about, for example, Mark Zuckerberg and, and all the others who developed these really you know, fa fascinating um, apps, yeah? They were creative people, but they put that creativity, they man that creative creativity manifested in the coding that they've done and the apps they've come up with. So being creative is great, but it needs to be backed up with a number of skills. And the best skills are, are really the digital skills now. Um, there was a study published by Cisco in 2015, last year, that within the next nine years, and in the MENA region alone, there is what is worth $363 billion of untapped digital potential over the nine years. This is money just sitting there, waiting for people to exploit through digital projects. So that's a great room for really putting, uh, man for putting that creativity out there, yeah? but backing, up, backing it up with the digital skills. So, so Hala, you completely disrupted the plans for half the audience who are <laughs> planning to go and study engineering or something <laughs> else out of medicine. Yes. So to build on that, uh, uh, Noor, if you were to again give some tips to people on how to guys I, develop I that, what would you say? disagree with that. <laughs> yeah, this um, wasn't planned, right? So go <laughs> <No>. ahead. <laughs> um, I, I, for whoever was here yesterday and heard my speech, I, um, it was about survival of the fittest, and the fittest is the creative literate. And in order for you to be a creative literate person, you need to do creative things. And when we say creative things, we're talking, okay, the brain is divided into two parts, the right and the left hemisphere. One is um, used for logical thinking, which you use for math, physics, and all that. And the, the other side is used for the creative, emotional side. But um, unlike popular belief, you're not using one side of your brain when you're doing art or music or any of that. You, what happens when you do an art activity or like an artwork or music, play music or learn a language, you're using both parts of the brain because they start working together at the same time, which means you're using your brain at full potential, making you smarter, making you more intelligent, better critical thinking, better emotional intelligence, and so on. And that's, that's what gets your creative, that's what allows you to get to the next level where you can be creative because your brain is working at full power. Um, I would advise students here and parents here to um, invest in your children's creative literacy. And that doesn't start with um, just like, just have them do art and music, music classes, art classes. Unfortunately, most schools, they start cutting off, the first thing they cut off are art and music classes, replacing them with sciences and maths and, and extra um, subjects that need more attention when basically it's a very short-sighted, um, um, vision because on the long term, the more you're exposed to art and music at a younger age, the more creative literate you are on the long term, which would allow you, allow you to, like Hala said, tap on all these um, untapped um, investments and ideas in, in the digital world. But you need the basic skills in order for you to, um, to, to, to stand out. And, we're all we're very we're in a very digital world. We're always on our phones. We're more consumers than producers, and it just makes us more lazy. Yes, we are more exposed to creativity and ideas and stuff, but we're not doing much about it because we don't sit and do things physically. It's it's all very digital, and I don't know if anyone uh, heard about bullet journaling, which is a new um, like new trend now. Um, they're turning digital into analog. It's basically what you do on your phone with all the calendars and the tasks and stuff, but they're, they're turning it into analog because apparently when the brain, um, there, there was a study that when the brain is sitting in, like you're sitting in front of a laptop or an iPad or whatever, automatically your brain is on a more relaxed mode. It doesn't put as much effort to think and, and, and look into things, and that's why you don't memorize as hard. Sometimes when you're looking into something on the screen, you need to print it out and actually fix your notes on the paper because the brain works differently with paper. I think you need to take a break from all the technology every now and then and write things. Like my daughter's handwriting is horrible. She's seven and I look at her, I was like, how did the teacher tell you this was okay? And she's like, mama, it's fine. Because even schools, they don't pay attention to 
handwriting. We had a creative writing class, which was graded, and I got stickers, and I used to go to the principal's office, and it was a big deal. There was cursive, and then there was italics, and then, like, we... It was a big deal. Even for Arabic, nasikh was like a very important part. We used to do nasikh on and on and on. And we used to hate it back then. But I look at all the kids' handwriting nowadays, and it's appalling because even academically, no one pays attention because they're all like all the schools now are um, very um, digital and technology friendly and stuff. And it worries me. I, I keep pushing my daughter to write, and she hates it. And every time she writes it, I was like, if your handwriting is not nice, I'm going to erase it and have you repeat it. So you better do it nice from the like, start. I was just telling my mom last time, who has bad handwriting in numbers? Like, her numbers are ugly. They're sevens and the fours. I'm like, mama, this doesn't look like a four. She's like, it's fine. It looks like a nine. Because she's just like, they're so lazy. So I don't think academically schools are paying so much attention to creativity, which, is, which starts with basic things like handwriting, to be honest. Um, I'm not saying everyone has to have a nice handwriting. I'm just saying the, the most students now, most kids now don't pay attention to this stuff. They don't write on the line. They, like, some letters are all above the line, below the line. And I'm speaking from experience because I have a seven-year-old. She's in third grade, and it worries me. So I think, I think what would... Um, basically build on your creativity is going back to the most basic ways of communication and, and writing and, and drawing and sketching and try and carry a notepad instead of having everything on your phone. It really helps. That's yeah, maybe if grade three are running creative writing classes, you can go back and take extra classes after hours as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Humaid. All right, so... I, I, I'm, I'm gonna. It's gonna be a bit of departure from from the ladies, uh, but I, I'm gonna harp on my personal experience. Um, so um, again, I I was was working the the regular job, and you know um, I, I kind of wanted to branch out. So then I start, I, I joined my dad uh, a few years ago, um, about five six years ago, and that's actually funnily around the time that I started taking my art a little more seriously. So um, when it comes to actually sort of again, if I'm not mistaken, you're talking about building your creative confidence and, and sort of putting yourself out there. Um, the, the, the things that helped me, um, because I mean, I, I kind of just fell into it. I, I used to paint on my own, you know, for friends and family, or oh, make me a painting for my house, or make me, you know. So I used to do that all the time. But I mean, um, as far as, again, professionally is concerned, I, I just kind of fell into it by mistake. Um, but once it kind of happened, I, then I had to own it. So, you know, um, when people would introduce me as an artist, uh, given that I haven't studied art um, in, in formally or in school, um, you know, I, I used to be a little hesitant. Um, so I think, firstly, whatever it is that you're doing, and this is, again, I'm talking about my personal experience, but whatever it is that you're doing, um, I think you need to first be confident uh, in yourself. So assert yourself. Um, and how do you do that? By, again, um, Putting, putting, putting the work that's required behind it, you know, um, the, the practice. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not the best one out there, but, you know, where do I want to be in a certain amount of years? That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to work towards. Um, and the other thing that's really helped me is, 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 again, putting down smart goals. So, I mean, again, these are obviously things that you've heard. I, I come from a business background, so these are things that are harped into, uh, you know, into my psyche. But um, it, it's, it's really helped me um, with, with what is my passion. So, I mean... What do I want to do um, you know, in, in the next five years? Where do I want to be established as an artist? Um, do I want to be more commercially viable? Do I want to you know, sell my paintings um, you know, across the world? Or is it just in the Bay? Or, so I mean, these are things that um, I think are, are very important. Um, and one, one other thing that I think um, people don't give enough value to is, is surrounding yourself with like-minded people. So, um, you know, if you want to be um, uh, the best writer that's out there, you know, get to know people in your community or not even, I mean, again, now the, the world is so interconnected. So, you know, uh, reach out to people who you think are, are, are really great authors. Um, uh, you know, they might be sitting in the States or, you know, in the UK or Australia. So, you know, reach out to them and you'd be surprised how open people are um, and, and how receptive. Again, 90% <laughs> of the people, there are people who are like, you know, I don't want to share my secrets, but um, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how, how, uh, how helpful um, you know, people can be um, because 
99% of these people have been through that same struggle. So, you know, um, who you see out there, I mean, w again, the most famous, uh, successful people, I mean, Steve Jobs being one of them, I mean, he passed away, but, you know, he was one of those people that, that started from nothing. I mean, he, didn't, he wasn't born, you know, the, the, the CEO of Apple. Or Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so I mean, uh, just, I, I, th I think a lot of it, uh, Again, our, our generation, well, not so much our generation, but the newer generation, I, I, you know, I think that's something that they need to be taught uh, because, I mean, again, I, I look at my sister's kids and, you know, the, the work that they put in, and when I used to go to school, <laughs> I, I, you know, I know, I know how I used to. I had to be forced to study for a certain amount of hours with their textbooks, and you know, these days people are uh, the kids are on their 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 iPads, iPads. Um, and their laptops, and you know, I had to I had to help my nephew study for exam, and, and I, I I was like I can't do this anymore because <laughs> it just didn't make sense, you know, exactly. and everything's multiple choice, and so I mean it's it's a whole different discussion, but I mean what I, what I'm trying to say is that hard work is is very very underrated, and uh, you know you 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 need to put in the, the work uh, regardless of what it is that you want to do and in building on what just uh, made mentioned I think one other key strategy uh, in terms of building <coughs> your creative confidence apart from connecting with a like-minded group of people from that area that you want to spend more time in is uh, find a great mentor uh, and the reason I say this is you know we work uh, in, in my business we work a lot with entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and the first time they walk in with their idea the, the request they often have is I need money, I'm, I need funding for my startup or I need funding for my new venture. By the time you finish the conversation, you realize they don't need funding. They either need a customer for that product that they're trying to sell off or they need someone to mentor them on how to actually set their business up. So I think in that same sort of perspective, if you look at the mm -hmm. uh, you know, ideas that have been shared by the panel over here, it's finding someone who you can kind of get some insights from and you know, obviously be grateful for it. Uh, so that they kind of they feel rewarded because they're not looking for money, you know, they're, they're looking for giving, having this sense of contribution and giving back. So in the closing minutes, I just want to, I guess, open the stage uh, in case uh, in the audience you have questions. You can probably do about three questions before we uh, close the panel off. So if uh, anyone uh, who wants to have any insights uh, on how to get creative or how to build confidence, you've got a great panel to ask questions. Uh, so fire away if you can just. Raise your hands, uh, your name, and uh, and then who you want to address the question to. This is also a confidence test. If you don't raise your hand, I'm going to pick on someone. <laughs> so you better raise your hand. All right, wonderful. Please. I was mentioning that you know the I like the idea of okay. I, I think that that should be taken forward. The handwriting for the students at school, because I also have elder kids that actually applied for university, and there are certain exams that they need to do. And one of the issues in these exams are their handwritings. The handwritings could affect the marks because the, mar the, the exams are actually signed outside for IGCSC and yeah, for others. They can't They're all it. outside. So th it's not the teacher who's familiar with the student. Uh, so I yeah. do agree with this. And I would like you maybe to take the subject up with you know, an initiative or something that could uh, be taken like to the I, KHD I realized, I kid you not, they don't understand that there are spaces between words. They Like we used to put our finger to make sure every word has proper spacing. They don't realize that there are certain letters above the line and cer certain below the line. Sometimes capital letters go in the middle of like small letters or s like, I just look at this and the teachers actually correct them and, and she gives them like, full grades. I was like, if you were my, my student, like this is a zero, repeat the whole thing. Because it literally, it doesn't make sense. And if they don't realize it at a young age, they're gonna grow with a habit of having a terrible handwriting and no writing skills. Because what happens when you're typing, and, and we grew from, with, like, from a different generation, you realize now when you type, you type it wrong because you know it's gonna auto-correct yeah. it for you which is horrible because sometimes when you want to write it, you're like, was it a C or was it an S? And it gets embarrassing. So that's why you need to write things because everything, everyone does everything for you. Your phone ha memorizes numbers for you. We used to memorize every single number of all our friends' houses, our parents. We didn't have mobiles, but the house phone, the grandmother's phone, the I don't know whose phone. It was a different generation where our brain was always working like it, the muscle was always working now you look at kids do you want to go out no i want to stay home they're on their ipads or they're doing these boring things like i i, I'm I think next year we're going to put out because next week there is the, <laughs> the national youth debate happening as you know with mm -hmm. uh, his highness and the, so i think we should tweet to that that the next year should not be there this year was the year of reading next year should year be the year of, of handwriting oh for sure right uh, but i think it's also part of the so-called uberization of things right because people want to save time they think they can actually type a uh, 
uh, an acronym with you know instead of on my way and OMW because it kind of communicates O-M-W. it, for example. So it's t- and again you have to get used to the, the lingo. So again, thank you for that. Uh, another question, please. My name is Akshansh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so between the talk, there was uh, this discussion about that uh, why someone creates, and uh, Madam Noor perhaps said that uh, there's a need for creation and then comes the emotional context as well. So if we look at the history, we have a very huge history where emotional context has led to the creation of something like true art. But we also know that people like John Keats or perhaps Oscar Wilde, everybody died destitute. So then comes the context that how emotional context can merge successfully with the commercial context. Because I come from a background of literature and uh, movie making. So we see all these great art movies going to Cannes Film Festival or Venice Film Festivals, but performing poorly at box office. So as an artist or perhaps as an individual who is still beginning their artistic life in entrepreneurship as well, how do you overcome that? Because the history is chasing you. So do you want us to predict your future? (laughs) No, I cannot, but that is the fear which leads to sometimes lack of creative confidence as well. Good question. All right. Does anyone want to give some perspective on that, please? Hello? Um, I think that goes back to uh, what I said earlier, which is backing it up with with this other skills, really, that whereby you can commercialize that creativity you have. And I don't think really, Nuri, were disagreeing. I think you were yeah. more like echoing what I was yes, saying, yeah. <laughs> because initially um, we had, you know, STEM-based education, right? Mm-hmm. STEM has changed now, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Now it has become STEAM. They have put the A, the artistic thing, inside of the, between the STEM. So our, our t- uh, the, the creativity side is very important, but you need to back it up with your right brain, right? <laughs> whether it's coding skills, whether it's business skills, whether it's, so you have a creative, so for example, Hamid, you're an artist. Mm-hmm. Do you, have you commercialized that? Well, that the, aspect it, of it so in the process and this is what i was saying earlier was that you know i mean it, it, being creative is one thing so i mean i can produce the paintings i can produce the art and it's great but i mean if it's lying in my warehouse it's of no use to me in terms of commercializing it right i mean yes it brings me pleasure which is great but at the end of the day this is what i was saying earlier was that you know you need to be you need to again going back to my business background you need to you need to figure out what it is that you want out of your art or again whatever it is that you're doing you need to figure out within and make these goals uh, write them down you know keep them in keep a keep a small card in your wallet and say well you know by next year this time i want to do a one two three um whether you're going to achieve it or not that depends on again how much work you put into it or you know again a, a bit of it has to do with luck the right timing the right place i completely agree but a lot of it and i think I, I, again I, I throw out percentages like they're candy but like 80 90 percent of it has to do uh with the work that you put into it um so uh, you, you just you, you have to keep on going again I, I keep on saying this but I mean you know we, we always hear about the big names uh, you know so this art, the artist is the, did this or you know this product developer came up with this product but you don't know the, the struggle that they've been through before they actually got to that stage so um, you know it, it, it's always it's always easy to say that you know uh, I mean I, I can't do it because you know what I, I don't I don't have the background or I don't have the resources you know so it's just not me but um, a lot of these people didn't have that 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 either, and and it was the work that they put into it um, that actually got them to the to the place that they are at. So, do, do you know when uh, Colonel Sanders invented KFC, right? So as they say, it takes many years to become an overnight success, right? So in that sense, uh, the ten thousand hours rule and you know all these yeah, sort of cliched things yeah. about how much time you put into it and what you get out of it. All right, thank you for that. A final question, please. Uh, the mic. Thank you. My name is Muhammad Khandakji. Uh, I agree with uh, Ms. Noor and... Can you hold the mic, please, closer? Okay. My name is Muhammad Khandakji. I agree with Ms. Noor and uh, Ms. Hala. They draw a full picture of creativity. Uh, creativity started with uh, drawing and simple things uh, in our childhood. Uh, child, uh, child uh, do you mind holding the mic closer? We can't hear you very well. Okay. Thank you. And uh, when we grow up, and when we grow up, we start uh, to put our creativity in commercial context. When creativity puts, uh, we, when we put our creativity in uh, commercial context, it's called innovation. It's not a creativity at all. So we start creative and grow uh, with, uh, build our creativity step by step. 
with the drawings and writing and writing and they uh, and will end up as innovators when we, when we put our creativity in commercial context so they d draw full pictures and um, uh, I th I think so do you have a question you. or is it a comment no it's a comment okay thank you because, because uh, اعترضت انه انا انه انا يعني على عكس رايك لا هم الاثنين بيكملوا بعض بس يعني الرايين بيكملوا بعض مش اكثر هم رسموا صوره كامله alright so uh, final words of wisdom uh, 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with Humaid uh, on the far left yeah so I, I, I just um, I go back to you know be sure what you're doing and stick with it um, and if, 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 you're, if you're good at what you do um, you you will shine through at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I, I'd say I I hope to be watching one of your movies sometime mm -hmm. soon. So <laughs> um, I think spend more time with kids. Um, I'm talking from personal experience. I don't like kids. <laughs> like I personally don't like kids. If a kid is not nice, like there is a saying that أطفال أطفال أحباب الله. I was like, no, no. Even Allah doesn't like this kid. Like I have that. Um, but I, I decided to push myself and start teaching kids art on weekends for two hour workshops and the age groups were from 6 to 12 so they're quite crazy but I fell in love with it because they look at things differently they made me they pushed my tolerance in a good positive way and it was it was I learned from them more than they learned from me in a way because the way they look at things like I had a self-portrait class and one of my kids was like, can I go in front of the mirror? And I was like, okay. And he just stands in front of the mirror and starts drawing himself. I'm like, oh. like I thought kids were just gonna draw themselves like with blonde hair when their hair, hair is black, which some kids did. Some added a fringe, some changed their shapes, some added like more limbs. And it's amazing. It's, and, and you ask them, ask them, always ask them, why did you do this? What what does this mean? What do you think of this? You'd be amazed at how creative they are. Like I asked my daughter, like I used to like kids have this term now called fashion trashion where my daughter was wearing different things where nothing matched and I was like, What is this? You're not going out like this. She's like, Mama, it's called fashion trashion. This was a year ago, she was six. And I felt so stupid. But then I'm like, Okay, and I let her go out like this because so what? Like, they don't always have to look so perfect. She looked perfect and cute and, and silly. And I had a story to tell every parent when they were, I was like, she's fashion <laughs> trashing you guys. So let them be, like, s spend time with them and try to find the kid within, the child within. It helps you be more creative, I promise. Um, my advice is uh, build your creativity. Take all these suggestions, build the creativity, gain that confidence and then back these up with digital skills. Because no matter what subject or major you've taken, whether it's accounting or medical or engineering, now most universities around the world, they have digital skills included. Because you, for every field now, there is so much innovation happening in, in these different fields. And this is the future, really. And this is where the opportunity is. So do um, develop your skills in that, in that area and um, see how you can commercialize that creativity for the benefit of society and economies. So I'll end with, uh, I guess, thank you for your comments. Uh, with something on a more philosophical note. So I, I teach leadership uh, on a side note to, uh, to children from the ages of 6 to 13 because you know, children, or we don't get to teach leadership or learn leadership until you're 25 and you become a manager, so to say. <laughs> Uh, so I guess the three things that I'd like you to leave you with is one is to always be grateful because when you're always grateful you can never have negative emotion or energy. Uh, protect your confidence, that's the biggest asset you will have. And last but not least, something that was touched upon by all of us today is be present. So when you're there, be there. Uh, because I'm sure that when you're here you may be having 10 other things or million other things in your head, but if you want to really benefit from the moment you're in, you know, be there and being present. So I think there's that skill of being present. I mean, I've got activities I do with my team to be present and just having this moment of silence is very challenging and disturbing because they're like, why can't I check my mail or my messages? Or I'm like, no, just look into each other's eyes and do nothing. That's really painful. So again, be present. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here, to the organizers and, and to the panel for, I guess, going along thank with you. my questions thank and thank you. Thank you.